Hey, and welcome back to another episode of Building Microservices with Go. And in this episode, what we're going to do is we're going to look at gRPC services. So in previous kind of episodes, what we've been looking at is we've been looking at how you can build out a JSON-based service and using that RESTful approach. Well, with JSON, you're using HTTP and you're using uh, the kind of JSON messaging as the, the kind of the, the message types. And that works great. It's, it's easy to use. It's very widely understood. But I think the key thing around JSON and REST is that it's not particularly performant. It's not massively optimized. And you've also got to go to quite a large amount of steps building clients and doing the integration and things like that. So Google came up with a new approach and they call it gRPC. And the intention behind this is that you're still using standard protocols. In this instance, it's going to be HTTP2 as opposed to HTTP. But rather than JSON, what you're going to use is a binary based message protocol called protobufs. So with protobufs, because they're binary based, they're obviously quicker. It's fast to serialize and send it over the wire. And with them also, what you do is you end up defining these interfaces, these proto files. And because you define a proto file, anybody can generate a client based off your proto file. So let's take a look at how that looks. So the kind of the basis of this is going to be that proto file. So I'm going to specify that I'm going to be using protocol buffers three. Proto three is my syntax, and this is the latest version. Now, in a proto file, you define services and you define methods for services and you define messages for methods. A service definition looks like this. So I specify service as a keyword and I'll give it a name. I'm going to build a currency service, currency. And with that, then I'm going to kind of start that um, parameter block and I can add the methods to it. So a method is going to use the RPC keyword and I'm going to create a service called get rate. Now, when you define a service or sorry, a method in a service for protobufs, you specify message types. So you need an input message and an output message. So my message types, what I want for my request message, I want to be able to, to define a way of getting a rate between two currencies. So for example, if my base currency is British pounds and my destination currency is US dollars, I want my get rate service to return me just a number that I can use to convert between the two. So I'm going to kind of specify message. And again, using the message keyword in protobufs, calling it rate request. And then I can add my fields for my message. So well, what, what I want is a field. Well, I want a bit, just a basic string. And I'm just going to call that base. Now with proto buffs, what you need to do is you need to specify the, the location in the message for that. And this is important because you can't change this if you kind of want backward compatibility. So I can add new fields to my messages and maintain backward compatibility but I can't change the indexes and maintain backward compatibility. So I add my string, my base, and I want to also add destination. So I've got my, my request, two fields, base and destination. So I can define that there on my method. Get, get rate, rate request is my message type and my output well, I define that by using the returns and then I wrote my return message. So let's define our return message. So the return message is going to be rate response. Single field, and this time we're just going to use float. I'm going to call it rate and the index position inside the binary protocol is going to be one. 
is that here I can just specify my rate response. So now I have um, my service. I've specified that it's an RPC based service. I'm using the name get rate. The input message is going to be rate request and it's going to return a rate response. I'm defining my messages here, rate request and rate response. And they're going to have string and float. So let's just dig into this. So I think one of the things that, that's a little bit not confusing, but you've got to think about protobufs and is that the protobuf has its own types because a protobuf is designed to be independent of your underlying language. So if I define a protobuf in Go, it should work the same as it does in JavaScript or Java or Ruby or Python. So I'll put all the links to the documentation below, but the, the kind of the protobuffers website here defines this kind of syntax. It tells you about the message types and the field types. So when it comes to field types, and if I just scroll down through the docs here, you can see that protobuf defines a type such as double. And a double in C++ is going to be a double. In when it's converted to Java, it's going to be a double in Java. In Python, it's a float. In Go, it's going to be a float 64. Ruby and float, etc. So you can see across all of those different languages, a protobuf defined type of double will convert into these various other things. Exactly the same applies to things like integers and signed integers, fixed for kind of numbers where you're going to kind of want a set number of decimal places, booleans, strings, and strings of bytes. So these are kind of the base types. Anything else, you can also define your own message types, and I can embed types in types. So the same way as you can kind of do this sort of uh, approach with, with struts. Now why it kind of does all of this is because you end up with this binary serializable format. And again, if we take a look at the, the sort of the way that things are encoded, whereas in JSON you're kind of encoding down to a string, with protobufs it's binary. So for example, this message here, test one, it has an int 32 called a field. Now when this encodes, what it's going to do is it encodes this to this, this absolute sort of binary protocol. The way that it kind of is efficient and the way that it packs is it's only going to use the, the required number of bytes to store the number. So a, a sort of a 32-bit number you would ordinarily have a set number of bytes with with protocol buffs it's only going to use what's needed so if you have a, a small number like one it's only going to use a single byte to store that data a larger number then it uses more bytes but because of that sort of flexibility it means that the the, the actual message sizes can be very 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 small transferring over that over the wire is obviously then very very flexible and i recommend you kind of take a look at this. It's, it's useful for reading just to understand how the message structure of protocol buffers works. When it comes to using it, you don't need to worry too much about it because the framework is going to deal with, with a lot of these things for you. So we've defined our, our service here. And what we need to do is we need to generate some Go code from this. So to generate Go code from a protobuf, you've got to use some tooling. And the tooling that we are going to use is twofold. We need the proto C command. And what the proto C command does is it generates code files for particular languages based on a proto file. So it's going to kind of take that protofile and it's going to generate Go or it's going to generate Java or C Sharp or Ruby, Objective-C, all sorts of things like that. For gRPC, 
and we want to be able to code gen some gRPC, what we need to do is use a plugin along with the proto command. So when we need to install proto C, and you can get that from apt or you can get it from brew, a number of different sources. And we also need to install the gRPC plugin, which is a Go package. And I'll put all of the links below on where you can get that. But the, the gRPC package is uh, maintained by Google. It can be found um, in the sort of the standard GitHub location. Okay, so once we've got that installed, so it's installed, Proto-C, we go get the gRPC. Then what we can do is we can actually generate our code file. So what I'm specifying here in the command line is that I'm going to have an input folder of protos. This is where I'm storing my protocol buffers, uh, sorry, my protocol definitions. And I'm going to specify an individual file that I want to look at. So my, my currency service here. And then I'm going to specify my output. I want to use Go as an output. And the plugin I want to use is going to be gRPC. GRPC is the framework which uses protocol buffers as a message. And I want to put that in protos slash currency. So we're going to see the generated code in this folder here. So let's run that. So make, I've just got a, a make file here, make protos. So that's generated. And we can see now that this code is there. So we're going to kind of have this as part of our build process when we change this proto file. We can see that what it's done is it started to generate the Go struts based on the, the proto buffers definition. So I created rate request here as a message, as a string base and a, str a destination string. And you can see that the code generation has created this strut. So it has a base, again, it's defined as a string, which is the Go type. Destination, the string is a Go type. And also it has a number of different fields here, the, the access no keyed and unrecognized. These are kind of used by the internal mechanisms serializing the objects. You can mostly ignore this. With a proto buff, you also get the capability that you can serialize it to JSON and, that, and that's quite useful to be able to interchange between a sort of a binary or a text-based protocol. But you also get a number of different methods. So it's going to set all of this up for you. This code gen file is not particularly easy to read, I'm going to admit, but you don't have to worry too much about it. IntelliSense generally does the bits that we need. So again, there's our response. We're defining a rate, float32. And we can see everything has been set up there. Again, a number of different kind of things used for marshalling. But the, the kind of the important thing what we really want to be looking at as well is the gRPC content. So the plugin is also going to generate all of my gRPC code. It's going to generate me the ability to create clients. And what we're going to look at in this lesson is how we generate a server. So the, it generates me an interface to create a server, a gRPC server, using my service definition that I had in my proto buff, I need to create a strut that implements this interface. So let's see how we can do that now. So the first thing we need to do is kind of understand like why we need to, to do this. Why do we need to sort of set up the, the various different service? And it's, it's the way that it works. So the gRPC framework what you're going to do is you're going to use a function which is generated for you inside this currency and it's a, a register service. So this helper function, which is code generated, it basically maps your implementation of the interface, how you want to handle things like get rate or the other methods that you define for your service to the gRPC server. And, and it kind of feels a little bit different from the way that you're managing JSON. But if you kind of think of it in maybe in terms of that your currency server interface is your handlers and 
GRP server is the same as your HTTP server. It's HTTP uh, two, but you know. So think of it that way. You're kind of just mapping routes to a server. So to set that up, well, we're going to need a logger. So I'm just going to create a quick logger. I'm just going to use HC log. I'm just going to use the default one. And then what I need to do is create a new gRPC server. So the gRPC server is actually in the, the base gRPC package. And I can set it up just like that. I can specify a number of different options on there. I'm just going pure vanilla for the time being. So once I've got that, in order to be able to do my, um, my register currency service, What I need to specify is the gRPC server, but I also need to specify an instance of a currency server. So let's uh, let's go create that currency server. So I need to implement this interface, and I'm just going to copy that. So let's do so. Okay. So how do I implement that interface? Well, I'm going to create a strut. So I'm going to do type currency strut uh, I'm going to need a logger so I'm going to define a logger on there and then I can implement that method so C currency get rate so context.context .context, and we need our rate request and our rate response. Okay. So the rate request and the rate response we're going to get from this auto generated class file here. This is put it into the package currency. I like to alias this stuff into a package called protos. You don't need to, to do that. I just find it sort of easier for me to kind of understand what's going on. So let me just grab the import there. And we can get that added. Protos. Oops. And that is in currency. Protos. Currency. And we'll close that. Okay. So we, we have this uh, rate request and we have this rate response. So let's just implement this here. So we're going to do, uh, let's, let's just log something. So we're going to log, um, let's just say, handle get rate. And we will specify the base currency, which is going to be PR Let's call this RR. Um, of course, IntelliSense is not wanting to work. There we go. Get base. So get base. And I'm going to use destination. And that's going to be RR.get destination. So then what I need to do is I'm always going to have this signature. I need to return my message and any error. So my message, let's just uh, return a new protos rate response. We're going to set the rate. And for the time being, we're just going to set that to 0.5 and no error. So that's the bare minimum that I need to do to implement a currency service interface as defined in so now that I've got that, what I can do is I can just do that. Currency dot. Oh, we should probably create a constructor. So let's just do new currency HC log. I'm just going to use that idiomatic go approach. Let me 
return. Wow, so much typing. Currency and logger. All right. So we're going to define new currency and we're going to specify the logger. And I just want that to import. Oh, it's server. Okay, wrong package. There we go. So we're going to import that. We're creating our logger and then we can register our register our currency service implementation against the gRPC server. So the next thing that we need to do is to start the gRPC server. So gRPC server has a method called serve. And serve is similar to HTTP listen serve as that you would use on an HTTP server. The difference being that what we need to do is we need to specify a net listener. So we need to specify a port that uh, connection that we're going to listen for. So we can define that. So we're going to do L and we're going to do error because net uh, listen has um, that signature. So net.listen takes two properties, the network. So what kind of network? TCP is what we want to use and an address. So for now, my address is just going to be anything, and I'm going to use 1992 as a port. So if error equals, I'm just going to handle that just in case I can't create a listener. It could be that the port's already allocated. Log dot. And we're just going to do unable to listen error and then we'll exit OS exit one okay but if everything's working then we get down here so let's give that a test so we can just do go run main dot go undefined protos main.go let's have a look and uh, protos okay I just need to do my import and let's try that again currency Register currency server. Okay. All right. So now we're up and running. So we've got um, we've got that service up and running, and this is running now. So how do we test it? So previously, what you would have done is you would have curled it. So you would have just done curl localhost nineteen ninety two. You would have specified the root, and you would have done some data. Yep, like so. Now, you can't do that with gRPC because it's not a RESTful service using JSON. So what we need to be able to do is we need to be able to test it. So curl is out of the question. We can write some functional tests or something like that. We could write some unit tests for testing, but there's an incredibly great program called gRPC curl. And what gRPC curl does is it allows, it's kind of like curl-like, but for gRPC services. Really, really useful tool. Super, super useful for testing um, when you're building out your services. You can install it just by doing go install. Again, I'll put the link for this down below, or you can grab it on Brew if you're in a Mac. But what we can do with this is we can kind of just do that setup. So instead of using curl, we can do gRPC curl. We can specify data. 
And we can specify that data as JSON because if you remember when we looked at the, the, the definition for our requests, it also has JSON encoding. And we can specify the location, so where our server exists. And then we do this. So instead of the root using a kind of a URI-based path, what we're doing is the name of the service and the method. So let's take a look at gRPC curl and how we can kind of use that. We'll use that quite a bit when we're kind of testing through our services and working through this example. So I've already got gRPC curl installed, gRPC curl. And we can see that there. So one of the things that you can do with gRPC curl is that gRPC curl can actually look at your gRPC service and it can kind of do some reflection. You've got this list command. So I can do gRPC gRPC curl, and then I can specify the, I'm going to use the plain text option because I'm not using HTTPS, the location, localhost, 9092, and I can say list. Now, this is giving me an error here. It's saying, well, I can't list the services because the server doesn't support the reflection API. And that's because we haven't set that up. So in order to enable our service to support the Reflection API, we can just use another package on gRPC called Reflection. And we're just going to do reflection.register and our gRPC server. It's as easy as that. You might want to disable this in production, but you could always put it behind a, a switch. So let me just quick restart my service and I'm just going to accept that because I haven't got a global firewall entry there yet but now if I run that gRPC curl list you can see the services which are coming back so gRPC everything is composed in terms of services and messages so service we've got currency so let's have a, a dig into that so now what we're seeing are the methods for currency. So I can see that currency has a method called get rate. Well, let's describe currency to get rate. And we can see that the signature for currency dot get rate is an input of rate request and an output of rate response. So what does rate request look like? Again, we can use that describe. And we can see here there's the, the definition of the input message. And we can see that it has JSON name. So I can use the JSON name of base and I can use the JSON name of destination. And that's going to map to the protobuf string type of base and destination. So this is kind of nice. So gRPC curl is allowing us to kind of, from the command line, we're not having to write anything structured. We can, we can just use JSON to test our service. So let's give that a go. So we're going to do plain text. We need to specify the data. So the data is going to be base. And we're going to do GBP, British pounds, and the destination is going to be USD, United States dollars. Location is localhost 1992. And we need to specify which method we want to call. So we want to call the get rate method on the currency service. Currency get rate. And you can see there that that call has worked. And we've got a response back of rate 05. If you look at the log that we put in there, you can see that the get rate message decoded base and USD. So that's kind of going through our implementation there. And it's really that simple. 
So in the next episode, what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you how we can use gRPC clients and how other people can create gRPC clients from your protobuf definitions. We're also going to look at some of the more advanced features. We're going to look at things like error handling because error handling is different from the way the RESTful service works. You can't use HTTP status codes because we're not REST. So we're going to look at the differences there. And we're going to also look at the differences and types of gRPC service because what we defined here is a simple unary service. So this is what it classified as something which has a, it's a kind of a single request response model. gRPC also has the concept of bidirectional streaming or streaming protocols. That means that you can have a constant stream of messages. The connection stays open. Very, very, very efficient. And we'll, we'll look at how we can build out some functionality in our currency service to maybe do updates when a currency changes. I hope you're finding this stuff useful. I'm kind of wanting to kind of introduce this slowly and, and, and kind of take it bit by bit. But, you know, if you've got any questions or any comments, please leave them down below. If you do like the content, like and subscribe and hit the bell button for notifications. I try to release one to two videos per week. Stay safe. I hope you're all well, and I hope you're, well, maybe enjoying a little bit of isolation. It's a great time to maybe do the things that you wouldn't ordinarily be able to do for circumstances. Okay, but until next time, stay safe, and I'll see you again. Bye-bye.